Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and welcome to our weekly nursery tour. We are up here in the production greenhouses and this is the greenhouse that we just built this past winter. And if you will look around, you will see that we have utilized our space quite efficiently, I think. You will see that the hanging baskets are like a double hang, um, double hung, whatever you wanna call it. They all have their drippers on them so that Jerry can water them and fertilize them through those drippers and it's all set up on a timer. So it's relatively hands off right now. He just kinda, right now he's telling it when to do it because there's not a huge amount of roots. So it is up and it's ready to go so we don't have to worry about watering those by hand and then look at all of these gorgeous four inch pots of proven winners so there are tons of little tags tons of little white pots in here and it is glorious so we're going to walk through here kind of show you what is in here and then we'll head next door to the other greenhouse and take a look at it because it is rapidly filling up too before we get in too deep to talking about plants and everything that we have, I want to address my folks who have been looking and shopping on the new website and ordering. Y'all have been fantastic and the orders just keep pouring in. Um, there have been some inventory issues where we have been selling out of things. So obviously that's just going to happen. Like the red strawberries, we have what we have and when they're gone, they're gone. Now, if you are coming here to Creekside Nursery, if you're coming to the physical location, what you see online is not gonna be probably a true reflection of what we have here at the nursery because we are trying to keep those two inventories separate so that we have lots of plants here at the nursery for you folks who are traveling to come see us. So if you go online and it says, for example, that Super Petunia Vista Bubblegum is sold out, it is more than likely, if you're coming here in a time appropriate um, fashion, that bubblegum, we're gonna have plenty of it for you here. So don't necessarily, if people who are coming to the nursery, don't rely on what you see on the website to know what we have here at the nursery. I hope that makes sense. There are definitely plants at the nursery, at the garden center that are not online. That is just a perk that you have of coming to see us. So just know that because um, our weather has started to turn i'm sure it'll get cold again but here we are just in the first week of march and it is a glorious like day and it's going to be a glorious week lots of sunshine you're talking about some spring fever it is in full force but probably you can start buying some annuals your cold tolerant annuals um here you can you have to be careful and kind of cautious and watch them and then of course your heat loving plants your coleuses and your um your angelonas and those kinds of things in as we get into april so we have plenty of plants for april and into may now when you start going to the towards the end of may into june you might see some little bit of areas that maybe are a little um if we just can't get a plant they may be gone. So remember the early bird gets the worm. As long as we can still continue to bring in plants and as long as Proven Winters has plants for us to buy, we will do our dead level best to make sure that the nursery is fully stocked for you folks coming later on in the season. Cause we know that it's a big deal for you to come and we want to have this beautiful inventory for you to shop. So just know that we are doing our absolute best to take care of you. Now, let's talk about plants. It was funny because I posted a picture, um, kind of like where Jerry's standing. He is right at the doorway into the greenhouse. And I posted a picture the other night of this. And y'all were so funny because you're like, how in the world do you get to those plants? And, you know, if I want this one specific one in the middle, how in the world am I going to get it? Well, Jenny's a little, just a slightly bit like OCD with just ask anybody that works here, like all the tags have to be facing the right way. All the plants have to be in the same order, nice straight lines. So don't worry, I took care of it. Um, you will notice, so like this is a short row obviously, but the same plant is in a row. So what's in the back is also in the front. So this is the new double up begonias. So we've got the red and the yellows and the whites here. So if we need to come pull a red double up begonia, we can just take the first tray. If we need another one, we can go on down the line. So that's the way it is all through the greenhouse. What is in the front is also in the back. 
so we can just work our way down in there there is so much product in here it is fantastic so let's talk a bit as we go through i'm going to kind of look at my favorites and i want to show you and talk to you about these so some of these are starting to bloom some of these were just potted up um like less than a week ago um we kind of anyway okay i won't here we go double up white so here is double up white the whole double up series is brand new this year from proven winners we trialed them last year they are perhaps one have ranked up there with one of my top favorite plants because they're so versatile they are sun or shade you do not deadhead you do not pinch and it will naturally grow this beautiful mounded habit now the bloom is tiny but the whole plant is absolutely covered in these blooms it is fantastic so obviously this is white but also you will get so this is pink there's pink but I want you to look at the foliage difference as far as the color. The white has that little bit of that darker, a little bit of the, um, I don't know if you call that burgundy. I don't know what you would call that. And then where the pink is just that nice bright green. And then look at the red. Red is even darker. Well, it's almost like the white. So you have not only color in the flowers, but you also have color in the foliage. I love these. I mean, we literally stuck them in the ground. We, we did do a little biotone with them because we planted them in July and they needed a little help. Um, typically, I don't recommend plant annuals in July, but we did. Little biotone, oh my word, they did amazingly well. Love these and I'm going to use these in multiple areas um, of the landscape. So we're going to put that down. Then another brand new one. Look at this. So this is Double Delight Primrose. It's another begonia. And I'll say that the Double Up series, they can do landscape or containers. The Double Delight, this Primrose, is really good for containers, window boxes. It is going to be full to part sun. So there's your tag for you folks. And of course, everything that I'm showing you is going to be an annual. We're looking at annuals today. Remember, annuals will last for one growing season. Um, they, when you plant them, would be dependent on your last frost date. So I'll have some people go, well, I can't use that. It's not in my zone. Yes, you can. It's an annual. You just have to plant it maybe at a different time. Our average last frost date is like April 15th. Well, my sweet folks up in Michigan could be a whole month later than that. So just know your frost date and then you can plant it. But these go in containers, not the landscape. Um, I won't tell you who made the mistake and planted in the landscape last year. It didn't like it. But they are gorgeous plants. They make, they'll have more of kind of a, of, of a weeping habit, a trailing habit. So like window boxes, hanging baskets, they'll do great in. All right, coming down through here, we've got, this is like coleus row right here. Everything, you can tell that the coleus, if you remember when we did that unboxing, all this coleus came from Pleasant View. There's lots of it. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, that lime thyme, I mean, you just, that is one. And it, we have sold a ton of it. Um, I think we're getting more in. Yes, we are getting more in. Wicked Witch, I'm telling you now, we're, we're stocked on the Wicked Witch. This is one of my absolute favorites. You cannot beat this, guys. Wicked Witch is an amazing coleus. Here's your tag for my visual people for your name. There you go. This is a great plant. All the coleuses are great. They just they do have different heights. Um, the Color Blaze series, they'll do sun or shade, so they're very versatile that way. But they will have different mature sizes. And then we have some, like right here, this is chocolate drop yeah so there's chocolate drop and then there is strawberry drop what's fun about these two guys is that per their name they are trailing coleus so last year we did strawberry drop and i had it in um it was a planter but it kind of resembled a bird bath over there at the green at uh, the nursery 
And when I planted it and it started growing, I was like, this thing is not going to trail. Like it was going up. I was like, this is, this is not going to trail. Well, yes, it did. By the end of the summer, that thing was massive and trailing down. Love it. But look at those, look at those colors. Look at that. So pretty, very, very versatile. So if you're looking for, and again, sun to shade. So they're extremely versatile, um, great for just about anything. And if you put them in the ground, of course, it'll be more of a trailer than going upright. Um, let's see. Vermillionaire. Now, Vermillionaire, y'all. Right now, we do have some more in a hotter part of the greenhouse somewhere that I saw that was a little bit more advanced than this. Vermillionaire it is a type of kuthia. If you were looking to attract pollinators and hummingbirds to your garden, then this is an absolute must have plant. We have grown this plant for years. It is the most fantastic hummingbird magnet. Last year, I don't know if it was because we got our honeybees, we're, the honey, we're a host family for honeybees. Um, I don't know if it was because we had the hives, but the kids had done a, a couple of pots, including some vermilionaire, and we had it on the back deck. Every morning I would go out and water, and they would be covered, absolutely covered in honeybees and bumblebees. And in fact, the bumblebees, I guess they spent the night there. If you go out early, they would be asleep, like hanging on to a bloom and just sleeping. It was so funny. But Hummingbirds love this plant. It does those little, it's like a fire, it's also called a firecracker plant. I'm telling you, bright orange, little small tubes. Because it's a tubular, the hummingbirds can get in there with their tongue and lap up all of that goodness that they love. Now, over here, we have, for those of you, um, very interesting. So we've talked about this before, the strawberry plants. We've got some here, we've got more down at the other greenhouse. So they are growing. I showed you this, I think, when we were unboxing the Cleomies. And their Cleomies are very much a hot weather plant. I'm looking for ones that are blooming. So we have two. We have Senorita Blanca and Senorita Rosalita. These are great for your garden or a large container because they bring in height to your garden. So let me show you the little bloom. It's a little bit of a different. Blanca is a pure white bloom. And then Rosalita is a beautiful shade of pink. These Cleomies are sterile, so they will not seed. Traditional Cleomies are very, almost like a pest in the garden because they would send out seeds. Traditional Cleomies would also have thorns. These are thornless. Um, they're not sticky. They are just problematic free. Great, great plants. They can be like up to, by the end of the season, up to four feet tall. So put them in the middle to the back of your flower bed for height. They, even when they're little, they'll start blooming. And as they grow, they just continue to bloom. And then they'll start branching and they'll have, oh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. So I love those guys. Tuck them back in here. You'll notice that we have a little, one little tea tiny aisle right here because if, when Jerry needs to get, or whoever, needs to get to the thermostat to adjust the heat, you, he has one little row, you have one little row to shuffle your feet all the way through here. Um, so much fun. Then of course we've got some sweet potato vines. Sweet potato vines are amazing, fantastic. This is part of, this is the Sweetheart Lime. Again, if you're looking for a great ground cover or um, a spiller in your container, you cannot, sorry, you cannot go wrong with these. You can mix them together if you would like. Those colors are beautiful, lime and a black. Lots of different um, sweet potato vines out there. They are great, different vigor, so you can look and see those. Now, my shade people, I've been talking a lot to my sun people. Oh, there's one. Okay, so I told you it would be easy to get to a plant. This one has a little bud. So my shade folks, if you want some gorgeous flowers, the whole Rocapuco series 
is fantastic because they make a, it's a double flower. So there we go. We have our first little bud. This was wisteria, I believe. Yes, wisteria, which is a beautiful white and purple together. When we first started growing these, we always did apple blossom and apple blossom is a real soft, beautiful pink. And we would put them in like terracotta pots like the, for people to buy like the whole, like an instant pot for people to buy. And they're just covered. They make these beautiful mounds and covered in these gorgeous blooms. People would always think that they're roses because that apple blossom has that real soft pink rose look to it. They're not. They are a double impatient. And we have got lots of the colors. I mean, just about, I think we have every color except for orange. Um, oh, here's, look at that. I missed one. So that's the apple blossom. So imagine this, a massive container filled with these kinds of blooms. These are shade, so they can do some morning sun, but after that, they will need shade. They are not, these are not sun loving plants. Now, if you are a sun person or have sunny conditions, then these would be great for you. The Lantana and the Rockin' Series of Salvia. So here we go, there's just two right here. They're green. We, we've showed you this before. So this is fuchsia, another massive hummingbird magnet. All of the salvias are gonna be ma major pollinator hummingbird attractors. Just, it's like, pick your color. What color do you want? And these get nice and big. Anywhere, they are di different sizes, but around that two to three foot, two to three foot mark. Now, let's move on over here because, and we still have some plumbing Excuse us. Okay, so here's a vermilionaire that maybe gives you a bit of a better idea of their growth habit. See how it has that branching look to it? So it will naturally branch and then it just is, will become covered in the blooms. So that's the vermilionaire. So like you have a main branch and then you'll have branches coming off of that. And they will go all the way to a freeze. So, um, you are definitely going to get your money's worth on those guys. The euphorbias, lots of euphorbias. So let's talk for a second about the difference between the three euphorbias. And I'm going to try to find plants. If we remember where I took these out of. <laughs> okay, so I did a social media post this week about the whole diamond series of euphorbias from proven winners all right there are three in the family so we're going to start first with diamond mountain and also if you will know let's just do this right quick jerry sorry i need a third hand they all relatively have the same right they have the same bloom they have the same leaf all of that okay so they're very similar so you're looking at them and you're like okay so those are three different plants yes let me tell you the difference. Okay, first, Diamond Mountain, hence the name. Mountain is gonna be the largest. This does really well in large containers with your really vigorous plants or in the landscape. So the whole Diamond series is gonna be full to part sun. They are more shade tolerant than some other plants. This will get three feet tall at least. So, especially in our southern climate. So, I have had it in the landscape for several years now, and it literally, by the end of the season, is up to my mid-thigh. So, definitely the three feet. Very, very vigorous. At this point in the season, it is extremely hard to tell the difference between Diamond Mountain and Diamond Frost because, really, they look very similar. Now, Diamond Frost will still have that very airy look that Diamond Mountain does, but a much more manageable size. These will get to be 12 to 18 inches tall. This does great in containers and the landscape. They, if you put them with other plants, this will intermingle. Um, and so you'll have, like if you have petunias, then you might have a little bit of Diamond Frost over here and then some petunias. So they play well with others. Then the last and the newest to the series is Diamond Snow. Diamond Snow is called Diamond Snow because 
It is a much more tight habit than Frost and Mountain. Still gets the height, but it's a tighter growth habit on it. And it is, has a more concentration of flowers. It has more petals on it, flower petals, than, than Frost and Mountain. So when you put this in a mixed container, you're gonna have a mass of white as opposed to where it in intermingles with other people. It is a really big pop of white, does great in the landscape. I love all of these. So now I'm going to return everybody to their proper tray. So hopefully that, that kind of clears up a little bit on the difference between snow, mountain, and frost. Um, because I know that it can be confusing, especially at this stage when they're not really big. Here we have some sun patients. We've got quite a few sun patients. This is tropical rose, which is a beautiful one because it has that variegated foliage on it and then that great hot pink bloom on it. So tropical rose. There we go. All right, there are so many plants. We've got more of the double ups. Um, oh, this is a great one. Haven't talked about this, I don't think at all. So this is a Terenia. This is the Catalina Midnight Blue. Terenia is a great plant because it has a great trailing habit to it. It reminds you, look at that cute little thing. Look at that sweet little face just shining. Sun to shade, extremely versatile. Only eight to 16 inches, but it's like I said, it's a trailer. This does, I've used it in the landscape under hydrangeas to give me like lots of flowers underneath the hydrangea. It's great, it's great in containers for your trailing. Um, hanging baskets, all sorts of things. So the Terenia is a great one and there's, we have the blue, a purple, and then a pink. All right, moving on, Biden's. So this is Goldilocks Rocks. This is a great one for Southerners too um, because they're very heat tolerant. I love the, look at that nice, big sunshiny face on that thing. It's a very happy plant and they have a great smell to them. Um, just a really nice smell. Look at that, all that foliage, just a really unique texture to it. Not gonna be super tall, just 12 to 14 inches tall. Um, a beautiful plant though. The pentas. This whole section is pentas. We have more pentas. So here they are. Another massive seller online has been the Suncredible Sunflower. Greenhouse is making noises. <laughs> these were these have sold out extremely fast. So we're having a hard time getting them. So I'll just leave it at that. If we can get more, we'll get more. Um, but as far as the online, I can't make any promises. That's why you just need to come to the nursery. Um, more, oh my gosh, so many plants. Okay, let's go next door. We're gonna, these, these up front were just planted, like little lemon coral. Like you can tell that lemon coral is still quite a little baby. So we're gonna come up here, or over here rather. So this poor greenhouse has become, y'all, this is a work zone. Like this is real life here. <laughs> um, this greenhouse has, you can tell that it's been warm because we had the sides up, we had the doors open. It was like, whoo, get all the hot air out. But like I said, this greenhouse has been kind of the catch all for all the leftover construction supplies and potting and there's tags everywhere. So. We're showing you the, the real creek side right here. Um, I will say for you folks coming to the nursery, we will have available petunias in gallon size containers. So you'll see that this is snowdrift, I believe. Yes, I'm looking at the tag, but there's two plants in here. These are great if you need an instant pop, especially in your landscape. I love planting a gallon petunia in the landscape. Maybe you don't have a hanging basket. Remember we've talked about this before, how you can put hanging baskets in the ground. So these are great to do that. It gives you an instant big massive color because by the time we sell these, you'll have just flowers galore. Remember, this is the unheated greenhouse. So we have a lot of petunias, 
the super tunias and the super bells in here so that way they don't go crazy and they're a little bit more controlled we're using the weather to be our growth regulators for these guys but speaking of super bells this was one of my favorite last year um we actually had so many sales we had to bring in some finished product from four star and this was one of them this is super bells over easy look at that is that not just about the sweetest thing you've ever seen obviously over easy like a fried egg with the white edge and the yellow center so for my visual people there's your tag great um so all of these we potted up this week right yeah because it was these were in that that massive order where we got two huge orders um in the same week so that's what these guys are so these are all super tunias um super bells um this one is not blooming yet again because we've just potted this up but look at that beautiful this is super bells cherry star that's a gorgeous color jerry's making a face it may not photograph well on the on the phone he says it's fine but look it up it is beautiful it is a great one and then of course you can see down here in the trays where we still have more plants that have just come, they just came in this week so i think i've talked about this before when we were down at the nursery obviously this is still in the tray from four star these came from this is the silver falls dichondra it is a great accent plant it is a beautiful silvery blue i would say i mean it's green but it has those blue hues to it it is a vigorous trailer i mean this plant is if you're looking for trailing this is it and it has a really soft kind of silky feel to it is a great great plant silver falls so you need silver falls in your life remember this is the one where people were asking if they could just take a handful ready oh yeah we do because they're down there and we have 200 of them down there in the at the nursery already so there's i mean oh oh we have a flower let me show you there's not as very many flowers in here because we've just potted these up with it first of all it's the tag and i'm going to tease you suspense black currant punch super bell look at that is she not a beaut? Love it. Full to part sun. So that means anywhere from like all day sun, you need to have at a minimum, you must have at least four to five hours on these guys. Otherwise your plant's not gonna die, but you're just not gonna have any blooms. Um, so lots of sweet plants. The yellow, if you're looking for a nice pop of color, you can't go wrong with just a good old plain super bells yellow i mean look at that you can tell it's going to be a vigorous bloomer it's just a great one so the hanging baskets are slowly coming um it's always like we had this panic of oh my gosh they're not you know they're not just taking off but then again here it is it's only the first week of march um so we've got plenty of time for them to really develop because it, traditionally it's been Mother's Day, right? That Mother's Day was always like the big basket um, weekend. But last year we barely had any hanging baskets by Mother's Day because they sold out just so fast. Because again, and you can see some of these over here, they're starting to, to come over the edges because um, we grow our baskets really big here at Creekside. Um, again, this is just a little snapshot so you can see how things are progressing. We will pot up all these remaining plants and just continue to fill in right here so for you folks who are coming to the garden center do not worry we will have tons of plants for you we cannot wait to see you um, i have a feeling this weekend is going to be probably pretty crazy because of the weather really pretty i know we've gotten spring fever i've been we've been outside all day um, doing various things and just getting your hands in the dirt. It's just a glorious thing. Um, but as always, we're going to sign off here. So as always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. Get outside and we'll see you next time. Bye friends.